or comparison instructions greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, and the limit instruction. Combining the comparison instructions. We had to take an older project, open it up, make a few changes and save it. And the counter instructions that we're using, count up and count down, both of them are executed with an external input. Input zero increments the changing value and input one decrements the changing value. In rung number two, we have a less than and greater than. If the value changing value accumulate, the counter data type accumulate, is less than value one and greater than value two, then true zero zero or local one o data bit zero, it'll be on. In rung number three, if changing value accumulate is less than or equal to and greater than or equal to value four, if changing value accumulate is less than or equal to value three and at the same time greater than or equal to value four, then true underscore zero one or local one o data one will be on. First question in the manual, are any of the rungs true? Yes. Which and why? Rung number three is true because changing value is equal to value three and equal to value four. Whereas in rung number two, changing value accumulate is not less than zero because zero is not less than zero. And it's not greater than zero because zero is not greater than zero. Therefore, both of those instructions are false. Not just one of them, but both of those instructions in rung number two are false. Increment the accumulate value once. So you push input zero. And now they're both rungs are false. Under what condition or conditions can rung number three be true with the current states or the current values of value three and value four? Only when the changing value cumulative is equal to zero. So we saw the only instance where rung number three can be true. I'll decrement back down. So only, if I'll go one more down, minus one. So now we're watching rung number three. At minus one, it's the rung is false. At zero, it's true. At plus one, a positive one, it's false. I can keep right on going up with my cumulate or go back down to zero. It's true. Minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four. So you see that only when changing value cumulate is zero is rung number three true. Increase value one and value three to two. So value one, plot the values on the number lines. Less on the top, greater on the bottom. I had you plot the values on the number lines with the less than instruction on the top number line and the greater than instruction on the bottom number line. And what you should have had, because remember, these are not or equal to. So you should have had an open circle on the top line on number two. Open circle on number two, and then a line going to the left, you know, through minus 10 to the left. And then on the second line, you should have had an open circle on zero, which is value two. And then a, a line with an arrow going to the right past 10. These instructions are not inclusive, therefore, the value one and value two would be open circles on the number line, meaning they're not included in the true condition for the rung. What is the only whole number or the only integer that is less than two and greater than zero? Well, obviously one. If I go up right now, the accumulate value is one. They're both true, right? Well, we're talking about rung number two. Rung number two is true. If I go up, it's false. If I go up, it's false. If I go down, it's false. So one is the only value for changing value accumulate that renders rung number two true 
with the current values for value 1 and value 2. Plot the values of the number lines less than or equal on top and greater than or equal on the bottom. Remember that we've got the exact same values in our two instructions. Value 1 is 2, value 3 is 2. Value 2 is 0, value 4 is 0. So we're comparing these pair, this pair, to this pair. And we're using these indicators to indicate whether the rungs are true or false. So I had you plot the numbers on the number lines. Less than or equal to on top, greater than or equal to on the bottom. On the top number line, less than or equal to, you will have a solid round circle over 2 with a line and an arrow going all the way to the left. And then on the second line, you'll have a solid circle over 0 with a line going to the right all the way. If you compare the difference between the two sets of number lines, the circles and the arrows and lines are in the exact same spot. The difference is the first pair, comparing less than and greater, are open circles, which means that the values of source B are not included. The second set of number lines, source B, are included. What integers are less than or equal to 2 and greater than or equal to 0 to make that second rung or rung number, to make number, rung number 3 true? Okay, we're at 1 now, so I'm going to go down to 0. They're both off, correct? I'm below 0. I'm at minus 1. Now I'm going to increment to 0. Rung 3 goes true. Increment to 1. Now they're both true. Increment to 2. Now rung number 3 is the only one that's true. Go to 4. They're both false. See, the rungs look very close, but the difference is the Rung number 2 is not inclusive. Those instructions do not include source B in their evaluation. So it has to be less than B, and 2 is not less than B. Whereas in rung number 3, for 0, 0 is less than or equal to 2, and 0 is equal to 0. So the rung is true. If we go up 1, 1 is less than 2. 1 is greater than 0. If we go up to 2, 2 is equal to 2, and 2 is greater than 0. If we go up to 3, 3 is not less than or equal to 2, and 3 is greater than 0. The problem is the less than or equal to instruction, the first instruction, is now false. Now they're both true. Remember, this is an AND function. Increment the change in value to 2. Okay, we're at 2. Is either rung true? Yes. Why? Rung number 3, less than or equal to and greater than or equal to, are inclusive of source B. 2 is not less than 2, but equal. 2 is equal to 2, and 2 is greater than 0. Increment the change in value to 3. Is either rung true? No. Why? Less is false, and less than or equal to is false. So 3 might be greater than 0 in both cases, but 3 is not less than or equal to 2 in either case. Now these instructions may seem sophomoric or too simple to even contemplate, but it is very important that you understand their behavior. And it becomes second nature because when you look at those two rungs right now, the only reason that you know they're both false is because the outputs, if you want to call them that, the OTEs, local 10 data 0, local 10 data 1, are both off. Therefore, you know that both rungs are false. If I increment or decrement by 1, the only reason that you know that one of those rungs is true and the other is false is by the highlight of true zero one, unless you actually read the instructions. Now they're both true, but notice that nothing changes here other than the values. The values do change. 
So if you read these, is one less than two? Yes. Is one greater than or equal? Well, is one greater than zero? Yes. Is one less than two? Yes. Is one greater than zero? Yes. These are both true. They're anded. So the wrung out condition is true. Turns that bit on. And of course, if these two instructions are true, then these will probably be true as well because this is a less than and a greater than, but it's inclusive with the equal. So in this case, both of these are true. If I go one more, now rung two is not true because two is not less than two, but it is equal to two as in rung three. For how many values can rung two be true? Well, rung true can only be true right now for one value. That's for one. How many values can rung three be true for? How many different values for changing value can you have and rung number three be true? Three. You have it's off right now. One is true, two is true, three is true. If you want to include the value of source B in a true condition, which set of instructions would you use? Less than, greater than, or would you use less than or equal to and greater than or equal to? Well, you would use less than or equal to and greater than or equal to. If you want to exclude the value of source, source B in a true condition, which set of instructions would you use? You would use the other pair, less than or and greater than. Decrement to zero. Increment zero, then one, then two, then three, and repeat this until clear. Let's go down to minus one. They're both false. Both rungs are false. One, two, three, four. Repeat this until you understand it clearly. In the previous lab, combining comparison instructions, we had you create limiting logic. Logic that would limit the true state of the rung based on an upper and a lower limit. A less than or greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, and it together. So both conditions had to be true in order to have a true state out of the rung, to make the rung true. What we have here is we have kept the less than or equal to and the greater than or equal to. We have also kept value three and four with them. So it's the same rung, but we did switch the output of that rung to true zero from true one, and we added the limit instruction, which we want to compare to these two instructions. I'll geezer this up. Starting with the accumulate at minus three, so I'm going to decrement down to minus three. Starting with an accumulate of minus three, increment to a positive seven while observing both true zero and true one and work your way through the following list, filling in on or off. Starting at a cumulant of minus three, both true zero and true one are off. If I increment to minus two, they're both off. Minus one, both off. Zero, both off. One, both off. Two, both on. Three, both on, four, both on, five, both off, six, both off, seven, both off. I like to go a couple values in front and behind of the range to clarify just what the limits are. Next, I had you plot true zero on the top number line and true one on the bottom number line for comparison of rung number two and rung number three logical statements, meaning for what values was rung number two 
true, true zero, zero, that would be plotted on the first number line and then rung number three on the second number line. Both number lines should be identical. On the number lines, you should have a solid circle over two and over four with a line in between. A solid circle on two and then a solid circle on four with a line in between, which means it includes two and four and everything in between, inclusive. How do those two rungs compare? Did they provide the exact same results? Yes, they did. They were identical. Did rung number true include the values of source B for both true zero and true one? Or rather, it would be better to say, did rung number two include value three and four in the true condition to make the rung true to energize the output? And did the limit instruction include both values, two and one, you know, the low limit and the high limit, where it was an inclusive of those two values for the true out? Yes, it was. With the less than or equal to and the greater than or equal to, the functions were inclusive of source B. With the limit, it was inclusive of both the high and the low limits. What if we wanted a limit instruction, a limiting function, that did not include the values between the low and the high limits? And I had you think about that before you looked at the action that I took, the change I made to the logic. So then I had you flip the values for 1 and 2 down here, make this 4, and make this 2. I see that instantly went on, so it's the opposite of the previous. Okay, we're at 7 for an accumulate, and I said to decrement back to minus 3 and record the results in the table. So right now, true 0 is off, true 1 is on. So it's decrement, true 0 off, true 1 on. True 0 off, true 1 on. So we're at 5. When we get to 4, both of them are on. When we get to 3, now true 0 is on and true 1 is off. 2, they're both on. 1, true 0 is off and true 1 is on. At 0, true 0 is off and true 1 is on. At minus 1, the same, minus 2, the same, minus 3, the same. So you see a major difference in the result of this logic, rung 2 versus this logic, rung 3. When we flip the values, they're still the same values for the limits, but now we have the more positive value as the low limit, and the less positive is the high limit. So think about this. The instruction considers these two values. All of the values that are greater than the low limit. Remember, the low limit is the low end of the range. If the low limit is 4, then because it's inclusive, it's going to be true for 4. It's going to be true for 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all the way up to whatever the highest value is for that double integer, like 2 billion, whatever it is. Because the low limit is the lowest value, the least positive value in the range. Value 1 is the highest positive value in the range from the lower limit. So the only way that this could work is if you start at 4, go all the way to the highest value, go one more, and now you're at the negative 2 billion, so many million, that big number, and then you just keep increasing until you get back to 2. It's still true. Then you go to 3, and it's not true. So it is exclusive of the test value, but it still is inclusive of value 1 and value 2, or inclusive of the high and the low limit values. And this can come in real handy. Because we're using double integers, 
and our high and low limits are only separated by one whole number, one integer. There is only one value that that limit instruction can be true. But you could open it up to make the low limit minus 5 and the high limit 20. It's going to exclude everything in between, but true for everything except what is in that range between that negative value and that positive value. Okay, I had you plot true zero on the top number line and true one on the bottom number line. True zero is going to look exactly as it did before. We didn't change anything yet. The top number line is going to have a solid circle on two and on four with a line connecting them. The second number line, which is for true zero, is going to have the only value that true one was not on for. was 2. For a value, a cumulative value of 2, going to be off for 3, on for 4, off for 3, off for 2 and below. So you would have an open circle on the 3, on the number line, and then you would have a line with an arrow going in both directions off the end of the number line. It would completely loop around from that value all the way up to the highest positive, and then it would roll over to the lowest negative value and then back up to this value again. An equivalent to this limit instruction, but very limited, would be the not equal, not equal to 3. So if you were going to try to eliminate one value, you certainly wouldn't do it with the limit instruction. We're just demonstrating the behavior. Change value 3 to 2. and value 4 to 4. So what we've done is we flip these values. Now let's flip these values to see if this behaves the same as this. By flipping the less than or equal to the greater than or equal to values, source B. Remember when this was 4 and 2 and this was 2 and 4, these two bits behave the same. We flip these. Now let's flip these. Let's see if they still both behave the same. Well, you can see right off the bat they do not because they're not both true right now. So we'll start at minus 2. 0 off, 1 on. With these values, the limit instruction, of course, we didn't change anything, so the results for it will still be the same. It will be on except for an accumulate value of 3 for changing value. Are there any values for the counter data type, changing value, cumulate, for rung number 2 to be true? No. Because the cumulate cannot be equal to 2 and 4 simultaneously. For one value to be less than 2 or greater than 4 is impossible. And for a value to be equal to 2 and equal to 4 is impossible. This rung would never be true. So there is no value to having the greater than or equal to source B greater than source B for the less than or equal to. We flip these values and we got a different behavior. When we flip these values, we did not get the same change in behavior. As a matter of fact, we got a useless piece of logic here. It won't do anything. 